Hi, I'm Jim Tam, and I'm here today to talk to you about a new tool for diagnosing organizational problems regarding collaboration. We finally have an accurate way to measure both the collaborative strengths and weaknesses in your organization. Because you can't compete externally if you can't first collaborate internally. What we have done is designed a way to measure both the current skill level and the desired skill level, in other words, the skill level at which employees feel they need to be in order to perform at optimal levels or be successful in their jobs, regarding five key skills that have been found to be absolutely essential if what you're trying to do is create more collaborative environments in your organization or if you're simply trying to become more skillful at building long-term collaborative relationships. The five skills come from the Radical Collaboration Program which has been developed over the past 20 years based on a lot of research and a lot of road testing. The five skills are collaborative intention, truthfulness, self-accountability, self-awareness, and negotiations and problem solving. Let me tell you a little about each of those five skills. Collaborative intention, the skill here is being able to stay focused on mutual gains in your relationships when your relationships hit a speed bump, when somebody makes a mistake or screws up or does something that's unexplainable, that maybe you'll get curious rather than furious. We have a little shorthand called staying in the green zone as opposed to going into the red zone. The green zone is a much more collaborative mindset. It's much more authentic and open. The red zone is much more hostile, more combative, more adversarial. So we ask people to take a look at whether they can stay in the green zone and be more collaborative or they go into the red zone. The skill of truthfulness is being able to create an environment where it's safe enough for people to tell you the truth. You can't solve problems if people aren't going to tell you the truth. Self-accountability has to do with understanding what everyone's role is in any given situation, taking responsibility for all their actions, all their choices, either through action or non-action, and then also being accountable for both the intended and the unintended consequences of those choices. For self-awareness, we focus on a couple things. One has to do with FIRO theory, created by one of my mentors, Will Schutz. FIRO theory looks at certain behaviors that we engage in in our relationships with other people and helps us figure out whether those particular behaviors can either build collaboration and build compatibility or undermine it. The second part of self-awareness has to do with defensiveness, helping people get a better handle on their own defensiveness. Because defensiveness in relationships, if you're trying to solve problems or deal with conflict, is like a poison pill. If you're trying to solve a problem or deal with a conflict and people start getting defensive, it's like throwing blood in water to a shark. So staying non-defensive is a very important way of increasing your effectiveness whenever you get into difficult situations. The final skill, problem solving and negotiations, is something that we call interest-based negotiations because it's based on the underlying interest rather than particular positions that people take. It's a way of negotiating your way through conflict in a manner that supports relationships rather than undermines the relationships. So these five skills have a proven track record for helping organizations build collaborative environments. What we've done is we've created a questionnaire. It's an online questionnaire, 71 questions. It takes about 15 minutes to fill out. And each employee goes through, answers these questions, and we come up with several different scores. The first is a measure of their current skill level. The next measure shows where employees feel they need to be in order to perform at their best, in order to be successful in their jobs. Now when we combine these two measures, there is usually a gap, not always, but usually a gap between the current score and the desired score. Our belief is it's a combination of the current skill level and the size of the gap that have a big role in how effective that organization is. Now here you see a slide which shows that there's a separate analysis for each key skill, for each of the five key skills, and one, it's called a team average, which is an average of all five of the skills put together. The report, 
that accompanies the scores has several different parts to it. The first is an introduction. It talks about how to use the report. It talks about what the five skills are. It gives you some background and overview of the report. The next part is the charts. And we have a different chart for each team that you're measuring. The third is an analysis of the scores for each individual skill. And there's a number of different possibilities for each skill depending upon the unique combination of skill level and the size of the gap. The analysis of each skill is followed by suggestions, and those suggestions are based upon the current skill level. The final part of the report is a coaches section, which gives an overview of some of the demographics. And I'll show you some examples of that in a few minutes. But let's take a look at some real scores right now. This chart shows the team indexes, meaning the average of all five skills, for a governmental organization where we surveyed seven different teams. You can tell by looking at this chart, it gives you some valuable information about diagnosing where you should be spending your limited resources regarding training. If you have limited resources, you probably do not want to spend them on team three. You're probably going to want to go down to team five and take a look at them, where they have much lower skills and a much larger gap. So let's drill down a little bit deeper and look at those particular scores. In this slide, you can see for each of the five skills and the team index, Team 5 scored very low on current skill levels and has a very large gap. So this is a team where the employees are saying, we are not skillful enough to succeed. We need some help. The results are simple, simple enough for everyone to understand, and dramatic. Dramatic enough for people to feel the need to take some action. We can also report out the scores on a skill-by-skill -skill basis. So in this slide, you see that we're looking at the scores for all seven teams and the average for collaborative intention, the first skill that I talked about. You can see once again that it's team five that seems to need the help here. The rest of them, they're doing pretty well. They're higher skilled, they have a smaller gap. But if we move ahead and take a look at the self-awareness skill, we see that all of the teams have lower skills and much larger gaps. So this gives you some clear information that you may not need to go in to all the teams in the agency to train all the different skills, but it looks like most of them are saying that they need some help with self-awareness. They may be finding themselves getting defensive. They may be finding themselves not as skillful as they need to be at building relationships. In these next two slides, in the first slide you see that the team is high-skilled at collaborative intention, high-skilled at negotiations and problem-solving. But they're low-skilled with a large gap of truthfulness, self-accountability, and self-awareness. Now, if you look at the next slide, it's almost the reverse. Their weaknesses are in collaborative intention and negotiations and problem-solving, where they seem to be doing pretty well for self-accountability, self-awareness, and truthfulness. So what this information does is it lets you design programs to meet your needs using a laser beam rather than a shotgun. I mentioned the coaches section at the end of the report as well. In the coaches section, you get additional information about the demographics. In this slide, you can see that the results of the survey are broken down by age category. And this particular slide shows that there was a dramatic difference in the way the older employees scored the agency than compared to the younger employees. In this slide, the scores are broken out by job title. So you can see if there are particular jobs where people have particular problems regarding collaboration. The next one is broken down by gender. You can see here that there's very little difference in the results as reported out by gender. The next three slides give you a comparison of how your organization reports out compared to the entire global database. The first one is the current skill level compared to the database. The next one is the desired skill level. And this next one is the gap size. All right, so we're very excited about this new tool. If you think that this can be a help for your organization, the way to find out more information is to contact any of the distributors or any of the trainers that are listed on this website. 
The survey consists of 71 questions. It takes about 15 minutes for employees to fill it out. It's an online survey. We have the questions in English, Danish, Dutch, Swedish, soon to be in French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Hungarian. If you think that this new tool can help your organization diagnose and fix some of the problems regarding collaboration, you can get more information by contacting any of the distributors that are listed on this website or any of the trainers that are listed on the website. Thank you very much.